Another thing that's helpful to be able to do when you are writing conditionals is to be able to put together Boolean statements in various ways using Boolean logic. And we want to talk about the different operators that we have for Boolean logic and what they mean. So there are basically four operators that we use in Boolean logic. The first of which is AND. And it's written with two ampersands. The next is OR. And this is an inclusive OR, or the logical OR. It's not the OR that you use in normal spoken English. In normal spoken English, if your parents asked you when you were a kid if you wanted cake or cookies, the correct answer was not both. Okay? That wasn't allowed. It had to be one or the other, but not both, because in English we use the exclusive OR. In logic, it's typically far more common to use the inclusive OR, and in which case it's perfectly happy to have both, both things be true. It can be one or the other, or it can be both. It doesn't matter, as long as one of them is true. There is a way for us to represent the exclusive OR. We do that with a caret. Note, this is not an exponent. Okay? The, that is an exclusive OR. It turns out this is an operator you won't use nearly as much as the inclusive OR when you're programming, uh, but it is what we use in, uh, in the English language. When we say the word OR, we mean the exclusive OR. So it's, it's one thing or the other, but not both. And then the last operator is actually the bang operator, the exclamation point, and it means not. Okay? So how can we use these things inside of programs? Simple example would be if we wanted to, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to copy these lines. I want to start a different file. Because a good example of this would be you're selling movie tickets. And once again, our movie ticket cost is going to be based upon age. And we'll read an int for that. Since I'm reading an int, I'm going to go ahead and do my import. Okay. If I'm writing a real script here, print line, how old is the movie goer? And then they type in an int, and I want to pick a price. Now, the thing is, we're going to consider children, normal adults, and senior citizens. And in this case, I want children and senior citizens to pay the same price of $8, and adults to pay the price of, say, $12. Okay. So val cost equals, it's either going to be 8 or it's going to be 12 based upon age. Now, there are a number of different ways that we could say this. If the age is less than 13, they're a child. Okay, So I could do something like, if age is less than 13, then we pay 8. Else, if age is less than 55, they pay 12, else they pay 8. This does what we want, okay? Uh, and you might wonder why this doesn't have to be more complex. If the age is less than 13, this is going to be the value that we get back, and nothing else is, is going to be evaluated. However, if it's not, then it comes here. In which case, we know that we're not less than 13 because we skipped that, we got to the else. So we're just checking for age less than 15, and we get 12, else 8. However, I'm not really happy with this, in large part because I had to repeat the 8 twice. I would like to be able to say, you know, if child or senior citizen, right here. Well, we have an or up here, and indeed we want the inclusive or if age is greater than or equal to 55.
So let's look at what this says. This says if the age is less than 13 or the age is greater than or equal to 55, then you will spend $8, else you will spend $12. Okay. Could we have said this in a different way? Let's comment that one out. What if I wanted to make it so I have this check, not check for child or, uh, or senior citizen, I want this to be the check for adult. And well, in that case, the adults are greater than or equal to 13 and their age is less than 55. Okay, so you note, I can say basically the same thing. Now these numbers should be swapped. The same thing that I said up here, when I switch from an or to an and, I also invert both of these, so I'm checking for the opposite conditions on them. But these two statements are equivalent, and I can say it either way that I want. So you can see how the or and and allow us to put together these Boolean expressions to build a more complex Boolean expression. And we can do this arbitrarily. I could throw in additional ands and ors in here as well. Maybe I would have a student ID in there, in which case students pay the child rate even if they aren't children. Uh, that would be something that we could put in there, in which case, if we were saying it this way, this would be if that or that or student. It would all be ors there. Um, this would be this and this and not a student. You can also combine ors and ands uh, to build more complex logic if you wish. So this gives you a basic introduction to the different Boolean operators in Scala and how you can use them and how you can use them to, to build up your logic. It's one other thing that should be mentioned about these, and this isn't too important to us at this point, but it could be important later on, and that is the fact that uh, the AND and the OR are what are called short circuit operations. So I'm gonna read in three values. I'm gonna call them N1, N2, and N3. <clears throat> and mm, uh, we don't really have the ability to do kind of the, the ability to have variable numbers of numbers here. The reason why short circuiting matters is it, what short circuiting means is that if the value can be determined from the first thing in here, we won't evaluate the second one. So in the case of and, if this is false, it doesn't matter what this second condition is. The whole thing is going to be false because false and something is always false. On the other hand, with an or, if the first thing is true, there's no point in evaluating the second one because the whole thing is going to be true. True or whatever is always going to be true. In which case we don't do the second half. About the only example that's that we really have for something that we could that we'd be trying to protect against at this point is division by zero. And so if we had a situation, maybe that's this is the the way to do this. We'll call our values n and d. And we could say For some reason I have this situation where I want to calculate the fraction between these values, but only if it's greater than 10, okay? Um, so I would like to say if n divided by d is greater than 10, then, or how about we do this, CW qualify, okay? So you qualify if that is greater than that. And actually then it can just be a simple Boolean expression. The problem here is what happens if D is zero? Well, I'm gonna run it and find out. Our moviegoer is seven. 
and then I'm going to enter 0 and 0 for this. And you saw I got a whole bunch of stuff print out, and arithmetic exception, division by 0. Integers don't like dividing by 0, and that's, that's not an allowed operation. I can protect against that by putting a check here if d is greater than 0 and that. And this is where the short circuiting matters. So let's go with 7, 0, 0 again. Now I don't get that exception because when d was not found to be greater than 0, it didn't even bother doing this division. Okay? Doing this division causes an error here. Because it's a short circuit operator, when this proves to be false, it never goes and evaluates the second half. It just knows that the whole thing is false.